Of all the food trends this year, one of the biggest has been charcuterie. Chef Gabrielle Draper from Barry Calibo is over in our Studio 41 kitchen to teach us how to make a dessert charcuterie board. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting to talk chocolate with everyone. Oh, it's one yeah. of my favorite things. The I, best job no ever. No kidding, I was drooling walking past the, the set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. What, what should we start with when we're talking about dessert charcuterie? You know, I say start with your creativity. Okay. Um, and chocolate, of course. You can't miss that on your dessert charcuterie board. But, you know, there's some key elements to keep in mind there. You know, you have your chocolate. It's great to include some nuts on your board, a couple different sauces, maybe some savory to mix in with the sweet, uh, maybe a little fruit. And I love to think about seasonality. We are in a great time of year right now with fall that we're in right now, the holidays coming up around the corner, and there are so many delicious flavors to incorporate. So today in these boards, I've uh, used some delicious fall flavors. All right, so let's describe one of your boards for us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I've got some big boards here for sharing, and then of course, we know today, sometimes people are a little more into individual and not sharing, so yeah. we have some individual charcuterie board options, and as I like to call them, little charcuterie shooters. Oh, How cute, cute are these? Cute. That is a great idea. Idea. What's in that? So I have a couple different sauces that I've included in, on these boards and I made a white chocolate caramel sauce. So basically just white chocolate mixed with a little warm cream and adding some caramel in. You can make the caramel in house or you can even just buy a caramel in store, however you want to upscale it. Mm -hmm. And of course some apple butter, or apple jam is great and we have some some chocolate bark. It's got a nice milk chocolate. I love to pair milk chocolate with different fruits and nuts for a bark. Um, figs are great during this time of year. Some edible cookie dough. If you want to make it fun to actually look like charcuterie, you can make them in a cake pan and oh. cut them into little squares. And you have something that looks a little like pate. So it can be it can be fun having a play on all of those items. So that's not actually cooked yet. No, it isn't. And you know what? There's a couple little tricks to make something edible for edible cookie dough. Obviously, we don't want raw eggs in there, but another key thing to keep in mind is to toast your flour. Oh, um, that's right. That helps to kill some bacteria in the flour. Sometimes people forget about that. Yeah. And this is, do you have apricots on one of your boards over there, too? I can't, the, I see yellow fruit. Yeah. Yeah. So I have some fresh oranges in oranges, here. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to build one to show you just how yeah, simple okay. this is. Go ahead. So I have some of my base elements here, but of course, the big element are chocolate. We have to add that, but um, we have some pretzels, some nuts, some oranges. Apples and pears work great for fall. Different cheeses, and I'm going to go ahead and add some of my other pieces on here. So I have some brownie brittle, which is made with some oh. dark chocolate chips in there and cocoa powder. These are great for dipping, so they have a nice little thin structure to them, so great for snacking. You don't have to fill up on them. You can take a little bit of everything. Then we have our bark, of course, with our nice figs, cranberries, some fall nuts. We fill in there. And you I, know, I always wonder, because it seems like when you put together a charcuterie, it's always so perfect. Does it always have to follow a, a certain pattern when you're making a charcuterie board, or how does it come together so it looks so put together? Right. You know, that's a great thing about charcuterie. You can have so many different elements and so many different things, and it doesn't look messy because you that's how it's supposed to look. Yeah. It's supposed to have a bunch of variety, a bunch of fun flavors. You can see how simple it is just to put some items. I try to keep them in little segments, the bigger items, just because, it, hey, yeah, if you do throw everything around here, it might get a little messy looking. Um, but it's great to fill in as well with some smaller. So we're putting our big items on here now. We have some edible cookie dough, as we talked about, with chocolate chips, of course. Now, you also mentioned you have some cheese there. What is a good dessert cheese, or is there a dessert cheese, per se? Well, I have a few favorites, personally. So I love white cheddar and brie. Okay. So white cheddar has kind of like a nutty, buttery note to me, and that goes great with chocolate, especially. Mm. So I love pairing uh, white cheddar with either milk or dark chocolate. And then the brie is great if you have fruit mixed with your chocolate. So if you have maybe like chocolate-covered strawberries, or you want to dip your fruit in the white chocolate caramel 
caramel sauce. Oh. Um, you know, that brie is going to go fantastic with that. Sure. So yeah. it's great for those fruity elements. So tell us about Berry Calibre. We say that it's like the biggest chocolatier in the area that a lot of people don't know about. Tell us about it. Yeah, so we sell business to business. So um, we're actually in one in four chocolate products in the store. Um, but because we sell to businesses and manufacturers, a lot of the general consumers haven't heard our name. Yeah. Um, but we're actually a global company. So globally based out of Zurich uh, for our North American headquarters right here in Chicago. We've been here for about 15 years. I mean, Chicago is a candy city, right? Absolutely. It's, you know, here in the city, everyone's passionate about food, candy. So it's a great place to be. So you're talking a little bit about fruit on the charcuterie too. I wanted to go back to that because are there any fruit that you found that just don't hold up well for a charcuterie board? Well, if you're using something like citrus, you want to make sure a lot of the juice is kind of drained out. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I love citrus in fall, so I couldn't resist today. Okay. Um, but if you're cutting an orange and putting it straight on a board, hey, guess what? Some of that juice is going to seep out. Mm -hmm. um, apples and pears are great. Uh, but yeah, a lot of fruits can work. Um, I, I try to pair grapes. ones that will go yeah. with a nice dipping sauce. Yeah, I think about grapes. I think grapes and chocolate are just delicious. Yes. Oh, yeah. White chocolate is my favorite with grapes, personally. Yeah, absolutely. What? And what is the difference between white chocolate and dark cho or chocolate, chocolate, brown chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a uh, white milk, dark, and ruby chocolate. And so uh, one of the main differences uh, between some of those categories is like the, how much cocoa salads are in there. Like uh, we call it cocoa mass. Okay. Um, so the higher percentage of cocoa salads in there, the darker your chocolate. So okay. that's why your darker chocolates are a little more bitter because they have more of that uh, cocoa in there. The milk chocolates will have some dairy added to it, a little less cocoa. And your white chocolates just have cocoa butter with, you know, milk products and sugar. And That's what, what I about this like ruby chocolate? chocolate. Yeah. Oh, what what about about the ruby, ruby chocolate? chocolate? Yeah, so ruby chocolate's really, really cool. So it's actually a chocolate that Barry Calibo uh, came up with. Um, it's Naturally, if you've seen it, you might be surprised because it's pink in color, but that's all natural. So we found a way to kind of extract some of the natural uh, beauty of the cocoa bean um, through the bean itself. There's a specific bean used called the ruby, ruby bean and the process that we've uh, developed to extract kind of that natural color. And it comes through in the final chocolate. And when you taste it, it's got berry fruity notes with like a hint of citrus in there. So it's really a unique chocolate experience, but you know, there's nothing in there that isn't in really regular chocolate. Okay. I mean, these are great because they say you should have some dark chocolate like every day, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You know, everything in moderation, but yeah. that's good for you. <laughs> Gabrielle, thank you so much for thank coming you. in. You're welcome. Thank, thank you for having Calibre. me. You can find out more information about it. All the information is there right there on your screen.